Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing an unboxing and comprehensive evaluation of this DeLonghi all-in-one combination coffee maker and espresso machine, model COM532M. We picked this one up on Amazon for about $300. Let's get started. The box, as it would have looked in stores, shows some of the main features of this unit. The other side going into more detail with four pictures. It is espresso on the left and a conventional coffee machine on the right, as shown in the layout on the third side of this box, which highlights specifically different areas of this product. The final side presenting more information about the features. Inside this box, we have a package of documentation, the machine itself, a separate package of items, and that's it. Everything is now sitting on the kitchen counter so we could unpack it further. A package of documentation, which includes a few different booklets. The first one that we'll look at is a color instruction manual, which provides graphical information and instructions about the capabilities of the machine, operations, cleaning, and whatnot, proof of purchase, and another instruction manual, this one without pictures, but a lot more comprehensive with regard to procedure. Moving on to the machine. This is the coffee pot. It holds 10 cups. It is a standard coffee pot. Nice looking with a black and brush metal finish. Two prong power cord, unwrapped. And now the machine unwrapped. Tape secures the bottom tray, so we remove that now. The metal tray on top is removable and can be lifted off the plastic tray. Tape secures the cover of the espresso water tank. We remove that now. This cover can now be opened. The filter holder assembly on the right side retracts outward as shown. The filter basket lifts out. The filter is a permanent metal mesh type. Those standard paper filters can also be used. We place it back into the basket. It has to line up just right. Pushing the handle down, the entire assembly is closed. We open up the cover for the espresso water tank and lift out the water tank by its handle. Just a standard plastic tank. Place the tank back in for now and close the cover. The end piece on the frother proved to be difficult to remove until you figured it out and then it made sense. I'm going to place it right back on. It has to lock in a certain position and then it's twisted into lock position as shown. The other contents, a single decalcifying tablet, espresso porta filter, supplied charcoal water filter. This is a scoop tamper combo, so it does two things. A filter for espresso pods, denoted with a pod on the bottom. Single espresso filter, the double is already in the porta filter. And that's it for the unpacking. Here we have a supplied charcoal filter to pull chlorine and whatnot out of the water. We'll remove it from the packaging and then rinse it under cold water in the sink. The filter holder is lifted up on the rear of the unit and removed. The slot is opened so that the filter can be installed and then it's snapped shut. It needs to be sitting just right in order for it to close properly. The filter holder with the filter is then reinserted fully into the machine. All the pieces you see here will be fully washed in the sink with hot soapy water before I continue because it came from a factory somewhere. I'm going to remove this double filter from the porta filter for this washing as well. With washing completed, I can continue. Plugging our machine in for the first time, we see the clock blinks like a VCR. We start our first internal cleaning of the drip coffee side by opening it and reinstalling our basket followed by our filter, and then we're going to fill up a full 10 cups. And this is the internal cleaning for the first run, and I guess you could run this every so often just to clean out the machine or for storage or whatnot. So I'm pouring that first full 10 cups in there, and we can see a meter on the lower side portion of the unit showing our min and max lines, and this 10 cups takes it to just under 90%. So now I'll close the filter assembly, place the pot into position, and before I begin, I'm going to set the clock because it's going to get really annoying without it. So I'm going to hold down the hour button until the hours start incrementing. We can see it's still in the AM. I'm just setting it up for whatever. 
and now I hold down the minutes button and then that'll set the minutes and then if I leave it alone it'll blink for a few seconds and that time is set if I wanted p.m. I could have the hours wrap around a p.m. now I hit coffee on to start our process and we're gonna wait because all we're doing is dumping hot water back into this container in order to clean out the internals one thing I did notice in this process though I filled it up with 10 cups of water we'll see that at the end only nine and a half cups ended up back in the container as a half a cup may be lost in the reservoir on the bottom or lost to steam or what have you dumping that pitcher I then wait for it to cool down because I don't want to crack it and having repeated the cleaning one more time I now fill it with four cups of water to try out the drip coffee which is probably the only time you're going to see me try drip coffee in a video using regular old ground coffee with this measuring spoon the directions say I should use one level spoon per cup of water in the coffee pot so we're going to open this up and I'm going to take a spoon out and I'm just going to slide it off there get a measured spoon because I want to be exact for the video I want consistency and I'm just going to pour in four scoops for the four cups and then tap it a couple times just to get it flat I don't do drip coffee very often so this is me doing drip coffee and I close it I place the container back under but since this is the only time I'm trying drip coffee what I want to do is integrate auto start in this test using the auto feature so I'm gonna set the auto now it's currently showing six o'clock so I'm holding in auto and I want to set the auto for a couple minutes away from the time now so I'm using hours to set it to six and now minutes I'm gonna set it just a couple minutes ahead of what time the clock is showing so 604 and I'm gonna wait and then it'll set so now all I need to do is hit the auto button and now the auto light is illuminated and it's 604 this should automatically start and currently it's showing 603 we'll wait for the clock to change and it should get going by itself and there it is there is a barely audible beep as things get going the coffee light is illuminated and the auto light is out and I can hear the things are getting underway I sped this up, but what you see is water on the bottom of the pot, on the outside, just cooking on the heating plate. And I'm going to speed this up because nobody wants to watch four cups of coffee brew. I do want to point out, however, as we watch this, that it's not going to come up to four cups. Again, we kind of lose half a cup of the water due to the things that I had mentioned previously. I hit the stop so that the heater doesn't stay on and here we have yeah drip coffee poured into a cup so we could have a look at it and I'm not a major fan of drip coffee but it, it looks as far as drip coffee goes just fine got a little bit of oils on top and that's okay looks and smells like anything you would get at a diner and yeah tastes like anything you would get at a diner so that's drip coffee so now we'll show the cleanup of the drip side. Drip side's done. Pull the pot, assuming it was empty because everybody liked it. Open up our filter assembly. We will pull our filter from here and throw the coffee grinds into the garbage, washing out this filter. We could also wash out the basket too. All three of these now cleaned, it could be dried. Then after I clean up around all this area, we could reassemble these pieces back into the unit close the filter assembly put our pot back on and we're done so we're finished up with the drip coffee side of the unit the drip coffee controls in the clock now we're moving on to the espresso cappuccino side of the house this filter annotated with a picture of a pod below it is for these special pods which I won't be using so I wanted to show this before I put it away Furthermore, I won't be using the single espresso filter as shown here with the single spoon. I'm only going to be using the double, so I'm going to be putting the single one away as well. We'll note that this porta filter has provisions to pour one double or two singles at the same time. And for those wondering from its design, you can see that it will not sit on a counter level. So I'm going to stow this one scoop now and install the double into the porta filter. It snaps in, we can see those springs, just push it and it clicks, and that's it. 
We'll be using our spoon for this side as well, but the other side of the spoon also acts as a tamper for the portafilter. I've removed the water pitcher for the espresso side. The max line is hard to see, so I put a towel behind it, filling it up now to that max line. I reintroduce it back into the machine as we'll be getting underway with our initial cleaning and close the cover. Putting a bowl under to capture water during our first cleaning. Also taking our portafilter with the double installed and locking it into position. We get things underway by pressing the espresso on off button, which then starts to blink. When the machine is ready, this light here will become solid. I'll speed it up. You can see by looking at the clock, it does take a good couple of minutes. Now solid, I'm going to hit this espresso button below to get things going. And as I do, we can hear some noises and we can see that hot water will start making its way through into the bowl. Remembering the goal here is to clean out the internals of the machine when not making coffee. While this is running, I'm monitoring the pitcher from above and I want this to be about half empty before I stop everything. At which point, I'm going to press that middle button again to shut things down. We'll notice that the espresso light is blinking as it has long since lost the temperature and pressure as required to make an espresso, but that's not what we're doing now. I remove the water and make my way over to the milk frother. Switch to the on position, blowing off the residual steam into the bowl. And once that steam runs out, I go and shut that switch back to the off position. I find during steam and other events, it's normal for water to drip and collect in the bottom tray, which often needs to be emptied. Seems fine to me. I'm going to run this one more time as directed in the manual for cleaning. And this will just be more of the same old thing, pushing some more water through until I shut it off and let it drip a bit. And then I'll remove that bowl. But this time, I'm going to take a glass and put it under the milk frother. And I'm going to press the milk frother button here, and it's going to start to blink and I'll wait for that to become a solid light. And once that's solid, I'll run the full pressure steam function in this glass by turning it to the on position. And we can see now we're getting a full head of steam coming into here. And I can push it down to cappuccino like that. Up to milk. Can't really tell the difference when there's nothing in the glass, what's really going on. But after several seconds, I'll shut it off and shut that off. And now everything's cleaned out and ready for use. The tray fill indicator starts to float as liquid fills up in it, telling me it's time to empty this tray. So I can lift out both, but I'm just going to lift the cover separately and then pull up this tray carefully. So I'm spill it everywhere so that I can empty it. I'm going to place it right back in because it's just water so I don't have to wash it out. Dry off this tray here and then just place it right back on. All clean, moving on. We're going to need espresso beans. I've chosen the same ones I use in my Yura Whole Bean Lavazza Espresso. And to burn extra calories and limit my coffee intake, I've got this manual grinder with six adjustable settings that we're going to try out today. We'll do a really quick unboxing. It comes in a felt bag, as you see here, so we'll unpack the contents now onto the table. We've got a small manual, a spoon and clip, extra jaw, jaw and grind it together, handle and brush, all of which will need to be washed before I use it. Everything now washed, I open the top of the grinder. Using the spoon, I'll fill in some beans into the top of the grinder. Place the cover back on. Screw on the jaw bottom. I'm going to set the setting for two for now, attach the handle, and grind the beans in a very unergonomic way so it shows in the camera. We're trying on two just to see what it looks like. After two was tried out, we flipped it over to one to see what one looked like. And there's no doubt that one definitely looks a lot better for what we're doing here than two. Two is definitely too coarse for our application. So we're going to grind up some beans under one, 
filling the jar so we have enough to test with. Leaning over a camera, grinding beans on the counter is not the most effective way to do it, but I filled up this jar so we have enough for testing, and I have sealed this jar with the supplied cap. The book says two scoops for a double, one scoop for a single, so that's what we're going to do. I can't fit that scoop in this jar, so I'm going to have to improvise a little bit, but one other issue is the lack of an auto-stop feature on the espresso side for one or two shots, so what I needed to do was buy something that's able to measure how much espresso is coming through. So I picked up one of these that measures one espresso or two espressos by ounce. We can see it's just a glass measuring container for an espresso, wide enough to accommodate the porta filter. So that's it, problem solved. Kick things off again by hitting the espresso button, which starts to blink as the machine heats up. I'm gonna be inserting the porta filter without any coffee grinds and I'll explain why. First, I'll place my measuring cup under, centered, and then I'll make sure that my water container is full. The problem is the metal from the porta filter is so cold that it'll pull away a lot of the heat, so we want to run one cycle of water through it to preheat all of this metal. We're going to use my thermometer from the cobalt to see what the actual temperature is of the water on the first run. So as I run it and the water comes through, we'll be able to see it's increasing rapidly looking at about 150, 160, and it's gonna peak at around 166 on that first run. Once that light becomes solid again, we'll give it another go. We'll see what the temperature is. And I've sped things up, but we can still see what the temperature is on the thermometer, increasing more rapidly than last time. We're now seeing it peak at around, yeah, it looks like 174, so a little bit higher but not nearly as high as the specified 195 degrees. So I take out the quarter filter now, placing it on the counter. Not having a better method on video, I dump the grinds into a glass where it can easily be retrieved by the spoon and then using an implement to level it off for consistency in these videos. I take that level spoon and put it in the porta filter, repeating this process so that I have two spoons and that'll be the solution for this video problem solved. I could do it by weight and get really technical, but we're not going to do all that. I tap it lightly to even things out a bit. And using this tamper, hoping that I distributed everything as good as possible, I use my thumb to guide the tamper flush. And then once I feel that it's flush, I just press down. Even pressure. And we'll see what we got. Brushing away anything that's on the sides. Looks good. Let's go with it. And this has been preheated, as we saw previously, so I'm going to lock it in. And we're going to be aiming for two ounces, which is a double. So we're going to stop it just before the two ounce mark. I've also picked up a 12 ounce frothing pitcher with measurements inside the pitcher. So I can have a consistent amount of milk in there. I've washed this out and we're going to have this at the ready with the right amount of milk in there for our next step. We finally hit the button to make the espresso. Now we'll do some close-up shots of espresso being made in all of its wonderful glory and splendor. Note the air and froth that forms. That's why I cannot stop it at the two ounce line. I have to stop it just prior. As we see I've done because as that collects, we're going to see that line increase ever so slightly. I then pressed the frother light and waited for it to stop blinking before I continued. Making sure that this switch is down for cappuccino. I'll be switching it to the on position when it is in the right depth of the milk, as shown. And then having it, this is more of a technique or an art than anything to have it right at the right position. I'm trying to lean it for the camera, so I'm not getting it exactly perfect. And while you can mess up frothing milk, it's not the end of the world. And clearly I'm messing it up because I'm looking through a camera and not into the container, and that's just fine. Satisfied with my work, I switch the knob to off, and then lower the pitcher so I don't make a big mess. I have a cup on standby, which I then pour my double into, followed by my milk, which I do nothing special with, because I'm not a barista, and I give myself lousy tips, if any at all. And that's cappuccino. Let's try it out. 
that's good. Turns out that's that is a very, very good cappuccino. A very good cappuccino. We'll conduct a standard cleanup of the espresso area now, removing the portafilter from the unit, turning clockwise to release it. I demonstrate this over a paper towel on video. If you were to smack this over a plastic garbage can, be careful as this entire puck could fly out into the can. You could secure it with your finger like that or smack it so that the puck hits the can. And now we could see all of the coffee grinds have come out. The rest could be washed. I pull the double filter up to release it from the portafilter. No problem at all. Both of these could be individually washed out now, but if you're having another cup of coffee, you could just wash this double filter and put it right back in. This is now washed and cleaned. So is this. I could wipe up any spilled coffee that's on this tray, but the whole tray could simply be removed from the unit, washed out in the sink, along with the bottom tray could be washed out in the sink, emptied. This can be cleaned out with a paper towel for any water that's collected on the bottom of this tray or any coffee. Then once this is cleaned out, the then clean trays can be returned back to the coffee machine. Just like that. Wipe off any water and we're done with that. This piece is removed from the frother where it could be washed in the sink to remove any milk from it. Also, this piece can be removed as well and washed out in the sink if need be placed right back on once cleaned and dried. The other plastic piece can be placed on, rotated till it locks in, and then turned to lock into place. The machine is cleaned out except for where the portafilter is currently connected to, and I want to see how high this glass fills up, because I pour a double with this portafilter in before this espresso light starts flashing. As per the manual, it's no longer maintaining pressure and temperature. So I'm going to hit it now. And I don't care how much water is in that glass. I'm going to stop it the second that light starts flashing, which it did because I sped it up. And we're going to take a look at how much water is in this glass. And we can see that it is just shy of one ounce. I run it again as the first one was technically a heating cycle. The second it starts flashing, boom, I stop it. And it doesn't come anywhere near the two ounce mark, and that's not even with the coffee grinds in there. So, yeah, not wonderful. So those who have seen this tamper in action, and they were hoping for more, and given it's just a piece of molded plastic, this is what I've picked up to increase consistency on the espresso side. Adjustable tamper slash distributor. I think distribution is more important in the portafilter than the pressure you exert because that allows the coffee to be more evenly situated. As we'll see here, these adjustable fins allow for an even distribution through the portafilter, while this adjustable tamper side allows even pressure. So I'm gonna bring this out, and it's a trial and error to get this right for our setup, but we'll eyeball it and we'll lock it down, and I'll play with this a few times till I get it right. But that's for everybody to enjoy on their own. But I've added two scoops into this portafilter, and watch what happens when I insert this and turn it. It's going to spin up all that coffee and evenly distribute it, and that's what's important. And we can see I haven't even pushed it down yet, and everything's evenly distributed. Flip it over, and this thing weighs a lot. Uh, actually, hasn't even touched it. You can see I have an adjustment to make here to bring it out further, because I want to feel some pressure push that coffee down. I know what the height's supposed to be, because I've seen it with the other tamper. So having made a couple of adjustments, I get it just right. So now we have even pressure, even distribution for consistent coffee to replace that. So yeah, that's an upgrade. We'll try our test one last time with coffee in the filter, waiting for that light to blink and then shut it off. See what we're getting now that we have coffee in the porta filter, and I stop it right there. and. Definitely not hitting a double on that, no doubt. We didn't even get halfway to a single before that light started flashing. So it makes good cappuccinos, but this machine's not going to win any international awards. But if you're not a snob about temperature and pressure, it's a great machine that fills a niche, that makes drip coffee and espresso, and makes good cappuccinos. And that concludes this video of the testing and review of this DeLonghi COM532M dual function coffee machine. 
I hope you found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and informative. Do me a favor, hit that like button down below, helps me out a lot when you do, and hit that subscribe button for more videos like this when they come out. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Would you like to reply?